Hallelujah. How's everybody tonight? Are you blessed and highly flavored? Glory. Glory, 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 glory. Glory. Oh, God is so good all the time. <laughs> Hallelujah. Mm. Thank you, Master. Would you turn to 1 Psalm 19 for Psalm 119 for one moment? Glory. Glory. Yes, yes, and yes. Three yeses to every part of the Trinity. <laughs> yes, Father, yes, Jesus, and yes, Holy Spirit. That's what he loves to hear. Yes. The problem is nobody wants to hear no. In verse 1, blessed are the undefiled in the way who walk in the law of the Lord. Blessed are those who keep his testimonies. Of course, we know what the opposite of blessed is. Curse. Blessed are those who keep his testimonies and who seek him with the what? Whole heart. Because when you seek him with the whole heart, you know what you do? You make connection. Then you can be blessed. They also do no iniquity. Why? Because they're empowered by the spirits. Remember Jesus said in Ezekiel, and I will give you a new spirit. I'll give you a new heart, and I'll give you my spirit, which is going to cause you to obey. It's going to cause you to walk in the right way. It's going to cause you. They walk in his ways. You have commanded us to keep your precepts diligently. Oh, that my ways were directed to keep your statutes. Verse 6. Then I would not be ashamed when I look into all of your commandments. I will praise you with the uprightness of heart. When I learn your righteous judgments, I will keep your statutes. Oh, do not forsake me utterly. Again, there's a difference between blessed and cursed. Listen, somebody may seem to be blessed, but it could be cursed. Does everybody get it? So there's a difference between blessed and cursed. There's a difference between life connection and dead connection. In John chapter 14. We see a lot of wealthy, political, governmental individuals that are prosperous, but they're cursed. Amen? Because they're not connected to life. They are connected to death. And John 14. Life connection. What's your life connection? <laughs> yes. Verse 1. Let's start right from the beginning. John 14. Is everybody there? Amen. That's good. Let not your heart be what? Troubled. Troubled. You believe in God? Believe also in me, says Jesus. In my Father's house there are many mansions... If it were not so, I would have told you. I go and prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you to myself, that where I am, there you may also be. It says may also be because there is a choice. Choice to follow and not to follow. And where I go, you know, and, I, and the way you know, Thomas said to Jesus, Lord, we don't know where you're going. And how can we know the way? And Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, 
and the life. I am the way, the truth, and the life. He is our life connection. Yes. Amen? Amen? No one comes to the Father except for through me. If you had known me, you would have known my Father also. And from now on, you know him and have seen him. And Philip said to him, Lord, show us the Father and it is sufficient for us. And Jesus said to him, have I been with you so long and yet you have not known me, Philip? He who has seen me has seen the Father. So how can you say, show us the Father? Do you not believe that I am in the Father and the Father in me? That's called abiding. In other words, he was connected. The words that I speak to you, I do not speak on my own authority. But the Father who dwells in me does the works. Believe me that I am in the Father and the Father in me, or else believe me for the sake of the works themselves. Most assuredly, I say to you, he who believes in me, the works that I do, he will do also. And greater works than these he will do because I go to my Father. And whatever you ask in my name, that I will do. That the Father may be glorified in the Son. If you ask anything in my name, I will do it. If you love me, keep my commandments. And I will pray the Father and he will give you another helper that he may abide with you forever. He is the spirit of truth whom the world cannot receive because it neither sees him nor knows him. But you know him for he dwells with you and will be in you because I won't leave you orphans alone, but I will come to you in spirit. Jesus was expressing, I'm the way, the truth, and the life. He is the life connection. By me. Look at he is our life connection by, our con by your connection to his way of life, his way of living, his truth. Amen? Amen. You connect to a new life and the father of life. By maintaining your life connection qualifies you to ask for life for others. Amen? And things that pertain to your life. Does everybody get this? I'm going to say this again because many people don't understand this, that whatever you ask, it's coming. As long as you are living correctly. It's coming. Just because it doesn't come the way you think it should come. It's coming. I'm going to say this again. Listen. You are connected to the Father of life by maintaining your life connection. It qualifies you to ask for life for others and things that pertain to your own life. Does everybody get this? Go to the next chapter while we're so close. In verse 1, it says, I am the true vine. My father is the vine dresser. Every branch in me that does not bear fruit, he takes away. And every branch that bears fruit, he prunes that it may bear more fruit. You are already clean because of the word which I have spoken to you. Abide in me and I in you as the branch cannot bear fruit of itself unless it abides in the vine Neither can you unless you abide in me. That is life connection. I am the vine and you are the what? Branches. He who abides in me and I in him bears much fruit. For without me you can do nothing. If anyone does not abide in me, he is cast out as a branch and is withered. And they gather them and throw them in the fire, and they are burned. If you abide in me, and my words abide in you, you will ask what you desire, and it shall be done for you. He expresses this again. By this, my Father is what? 
glorified, that you bear much fruit, so you will be my disciples. As the Father loved me, I also have loved you. Abide in, in my love. If you keep my commandments, you will abide in my love, just as I have kept my Father's commandments and abide in his love. Now, these are not like Ten Commandments. These are fellowship and what he commands us to do. Not that the Ten Commandments are already in you. You abide by them anyways. It's automatic. These things I have spoken to you that my joy may remain in you and that your joy may be what? Full. That's why no believer should be miserable. This is my commandment that you love one another as I have loved you. Greater love is no one than this, that to lay down one's life for their friends. For you are my friends if you do whatever I command you. He says that again. No longer do I call you servants, for a servant does not know what his master is doing. But I have called you friends for all things that I have heard from my father, I have made known to you. You did not choose me, but I chose you and appointed you that you should go and bear fruit and that your fruit should remain and that whatever you ask the Father in my name, he may give you. Again, he says this again. So we know that abide is to connect to the life giver. We bear fruits of eternal life in a temporary realm because we are life connected amen? amen and these are life fruits you have eternal fruits manifesting because you are life connected you are bearing fruits of eternity of the divine nature of the character of life himself in a temporary realm so people may not understand you but they may see you as different because you don't react according to the way the world reacts. You respond according to the way heaven does. It's different. In John chapter 7, John 7, verse 37. Is everybody there? On the last day, that great day of the feast, Jesus stood up and he cried out. This is one that says he cried out. He was trying to get everybody's attention. He was trying to penetrate every part of the individual's beings there and give them something. You know what he's trying to do? Connect them. He cried out. And he said, if anyone thirsts, let him come to me and drink. He who believes in me, as the scripture has said, out of his heart will flow rivers of living water. Not water. Living water. Why? Because we are life connected. It is different. What do we just share about? He says, if you're truly connected to life, and you bear the fruits of eternity, of the divine nature, life himself. You bear those fruits. Whatever you ask, you shall receive. Was there anything that Jesus was denied from the Father? No. Verse 39. But this he spoke concerning the Spirit whom those believing in him would receive, for the Holy Spirit was not yet given because Jesus had not been glorified. So he was speaking about the Holy Spirit who is the Spirit of life. There, therefore, many from the crowd, when they heard this, said, truly, this is a prophet, the prophet. Others said, this is the Christ. But some said, will the Christ come out of Galilee? Has not the scripture said that Christ comes from the seed of David and from the town of Bethlehem where David was? Hello. Boy, they could confess it, but they didn't connect it. 
So there was a division among the people because of him. Hallelujah. Now, again, this living waters is fruits of truth. It is spiritual life. Why? Because we are connected to the life giver. And one of the things that water does, when you plant a seed and you water it, it brings its life. See, you can go without food, but you can't go without water. Life is brought by living water. Remember, he offered the woman, the Samaritan. She was at the well. And she was getting water. And, she, and he said, he offered her living water, but she was more interested in the physical water. What water does is keep things alive. Keeps things alive. And that's what the Holy Spirit's trying to bring to me and you tonight. Because too many things are dying and not kept alive. Things that God has given us have died because we didn't keep it alive. It's our responsibility to water those things. Does everybody get it? Why? Because we are connected to life himself. We are life connection. Oh, hallelujah. Romans 8. Romans 8, verse 1. Life connection. Whose responsibility to keep things alive? Ours. Whose responsibility to keep your faith alive? Ours. That's why it's, whose responsibility to keep hope alive? Ours. That's why it's called living hope. It's alive. We are responsible. Why do you think God put Adam in the garden? What was his responsibility to do? Keep everything what? Alive. Verse 1. There is therefore now no condemnation to those who walk in Christ Jesus, or those who are in Christ Jesus, who do not walk according to the flesh. Why? Flesh is connected to death, not life. But according to the Spirit... So this is called the law of the Spirit if we are connected to the Spirit. For the law of the Spirit of life in Christ Jesus has made me free from the law of sin and death. That means you've been connected to the Spirit of life. You have a life connection. What the enemy wants to do is disconnect it. And he wants you to stop watering the things or keeping those things alive that God has given you or even promised you. For what the law could not do in there, it was weak through the flesh. God did by sending his own son in the likeness of sinful flesh. On account of sin, he condemned sin in the flesh. That the righteous requirement of the law might be fulfilled in us who did not walk according to death or flesh, but according to life in the spirit. For those who live according to death or flesh set their minds on the things of the flesh. But those who live according to the Spirit, the things of the Spirit, which is life. So to be carnally minded is death, but to be spiritually minded is life and peace. Because the carnal mind is hatred or enmity against God. For it is not subject to the law of God, nor indeed can it be. So then those who are in the flesh cannot please God. It is impossible. Why? Because flesh is connected to death. It is not connected to life. So when you live a life for yourself, you are connected to death. That's why you must deny yourself. See, that is the process. Deny yourself, pick up the cross, and follow or fight. Why? Because to constantly deny yourself, you are watering. You are keeping your new man alive, and you're causing death to the old man. You must deny yourself. When you put yourself first... You just watered the old man. 
Is everybody okay? The law of the spirit of life is the law of life connection. It is a law. What about what you sow is what you reap? You sow is that a flesh reaps corruption. You sow is that a spirit reaps life. It's a law. John 6. Jesus warned them in one of the letters to the churches. He warned them because they were allowing the things that he gave them, they were, it was dying. And he told them, you've lost your first love, you've lost your first works, get back and get these things back alive again that I've given you. Things go dead because they're not maintained or watered. That's why the devil comes to what? Steal, kill, destroy. And verse 53. Then Jesus said to Moses, Surely I say to you, unless you eat the flesh of the Son of Man and drink his blood, you have no life in you. Of course, we, it represents drinking of the Spirit and eating the Word. That means you must abide, connect. Whoever eats my flesh and drinks my blood has eternal life, and I will raise him up at the last day. For my flesh is food indeed, and my blood is drink indeed. He who eats my flesh and drinks my blood abides in me, and I in him. As the living Father sent me, and I live because of the Father, so he who feeds on me will live because of me. Feeds on me, feeds on me. How do you feed on him? You are connected. You have fellowship. You hear him. You obey him. Lean not on your own understanding. Acknowledge him in all of your ways. Set him before you. See, there's a time when you and I must reset things. We reset things. That's why God brings us into his presence so we can reset things to see things that are beginning to drift towards death so they can be rewatered to come back to life. This is the bread which came down from heaven, not as your fathers ate the manna and are dead. He who eats this bread will live forever. These things he said in the synagogue as he taught in Capernaum. Therefore, many of his disciples, when they heard this, said, this is hard saying. Who can understand it? They actually thought they were going to eat Jesus. Because <laughs> they didn't have the spirit yet. They couldn't understand and then Jesus explains this. <laughs> and when Jesus knew in himself that his disciples complained about this, he said to them, does this offend you? What then if you should see the Son of Man ascend where he was before? It is the Spirit who gives life. The flesh profits nothing. Nothing. <laughs> And the words that I speak to you are spirit, so they are life. And they are what? Life. Life. That's why the word says that there's death and life in the power of the tongue. Our words can speak death to us. That's why people who grumble and complain all the time are always in trouble. Because they're always speaking death. They don't water anything that God has given them comes right out of their mouth. They're actually killing the things that God gave them. Not even realizing it. That's why people grow weary, disappointed. Why? Because they're not watering it. They're not keeping the things alive that God has given them. Because they're so emotionally attached to everything. And everything's about a feeling. That's why people keep their past alive. Instead of it being dead. Oh, glory. Spirit who gives life and words of Jesus are life connecting with his presence and his word and aligning yourself with his truth keeps things alive. Galatians 5. Galatians chapter 5. 
in verse 16. Life connection. I say then walk in the spirit and you will not fulfill the loss of death. <laughs> loss of the flesh. Walking in the spirit. Why? That's life connection, isn't it? For the flesh lusts against the spirit and the spirit against the flesh. And these are contrary to one another. So you do not do the things that you wish or your flesh desires. But if you are led by the spirit, you are not under the law of sin and death. Now the works of death or the works of the flesh, these are fruits of disconnect. These are fruits of connection to death. Evidence. Adultery, fornication, uncleanness, lewdness, idolatry, sorcery, which is associated with drugs and stuff. Hatred, contentions, jealousies, outbursts of wrath, selfish ambitions, dissensions, heresies, envy, murders, drunkenness, revelries, and the like, of which I tell you before, and just as I also told you in time past, that those who practice such things will not inherit the kingdom of God. Why? Because they are practicing fruits of death. These are fruits of disconnect. And because they're practicing these things, they're not watering the things that God has given them. Amen. But the fruit of the Spirit is what? Love, joy, peace, long-suffering, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. Against such there is no law. And those who are Christ have crucified the flesh with its passions and desires. If we live in the Spirit, let us also walk in the Spirit and let us not become conceited, provoking one another, envying one another. In other words, there's fruits of life and fruits of death. One is life connected and one is dead connected. Amen. Titus 3. And we want to keep things alive. Titus 3. How do we keep things alive? Prayer. That's how you keep everything alive. Prayer and connect. Worship. Decreeing the word. Remember, it's connection with God's presence. It's connection with God's word. And it's aligning yourself with the truth. But without prayer, you can't keep nothing alive. Titus 3, verse 1. It says, Remind them to be subject to rulers and authorities, to obey and to be ready for every good work, to speak evil of no one and to be peaceable, gentle, showing all humility to all men. For we ourselves were also once foolish disobedient, deceived, serving various lusts and pleasures, living in malice and envy, hateful and hating one another. But when the kindness of the love of God our Savior toward man appeared, not by works of righteousness, which we have done, but by according to his mercy, he saved us through the washing of regeneration and renewing of the Holy Spirit, whom he poured out on us, abundantly through Jesus Christ our Savior, that having been justified by His grace, we should become heirs according to the hope of eternal life. He said, this is a faithful saying, and these things I want you to affirm when? Constantly. That means He, he wants you to keep it alive. Amen. That those who believe in God should be careful to maintain good works. These things are good and profitable to men. But avoid foolish disputes, genealogies, contentions, and strivings about the law, for they are unprofitable and useless. Reject the device of man after the first and second admonishment, knowing that such a person is warped and sinning and being what? Self-condemned. Again, life connection to the Spirit of God, which who is the Holy Spirit. He's the one who brings regeneration. He reminds me in you. He brings things to remembrance. That's why it says, renew your mind. 
That's, that's refreshing. Why? So you keep hope alive. You keep faith alive. But stay and avoid away from life killers. Remember, associations bring impartations. So many individuals keep sinning because they keep sin alive. They're still keeping their past alive. Emotional attachments. Even sicknesses they still keep alive. Debt alive. Oppression. Addiction. All of these things can maintain a life if it's not destroyed. Amen? Jesus gave you the power of life and death. He gave us his word that won't return void. But if your faith is not active, now I want you to know that something important. If something's alive, it's activated. Amen? It's activating. It's generating. It's constantly activating. It's constantly generating. That's why the Holy Spirit is a regeneration. He's a generator. <laughs> you must stay plugged into him so you can zap everyone. In other words, these lights that are on in this building is because it's a representation of flow of electricity, but it's actually a symbolic arena of the flow of life. It brings light into darkness. Amen? John 10. The further, the longer an individual stays away from the presence of God in worship, the more darkness overtakes them because they don't have the ability to water what God is giving them. John 10. When people tithe, if they will water it, you know, many people will tithe. They'll give offerings and tithes and whatever. Then they forget it. It's not been watered. It's seed. It must constantly be watered. Lord, I remind you of all of the seeds I planted. I pray for every seed that it grow and bear fruit a thousandfold. Hello, now you've watered it. That's prayer. But so many times people just let things go and it, gets, and it dies. The enemy comes to what? Steal, kill, and destroy. Woo -hoo -hoo. We'll talk about that right now. Verse 7. Then Jesus said to them again, Most assuredly I say to you, I am the door of the sheep. All whoever came before me are thieves and robbers, but the sheep did not hear them. I am the door, and if anyone enters by me, he will be saved and will go in and out and find pasture. The thief does not come except to steal, kill, and to destroy. I have come that they may have life and that they may have it more abundantly. That is so phenomenal. But it cannot, you cannot have life and life abundantly if it's not maintained, if it's not activated, if it's not watered. Amen? Amen. I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd gives his life for the sheep. Praise God. Life abundantly comes by maintaining it, by watering it, by keeping it active, whatever God has given you. In Joel chapter 2. Hallelujah. Joel. Show them where it is, Mike. Hallelujah. It's a new season. It's a new day. Fresh anointing is going to water my way. It's a season of power. 
and prosperity. Why? Because the anointing brings life. It waters. Joel 2, verse 21. Yes. Fear not, O land. Be glad and rejoice, for the Lord has done marvelous things. Do not be afraid, you beasts of the field, for the open pastures are springing up, and the trees bear its fruit. The fig tree and the vine yield their strength. Be glad then, you children of Zion, and rejoice in the Lord your God, for he has given you the former rain faithfully. What does rain do? It waters. And he will cause the rain to come down on you, the former rain and the latter rain in the first month. The threshing floor shall be full of wheat, and the vat shall overflow and new wine and or with new wine and oil. So I will restore to you the years that the swarming locusts have eaten, the crawling locusts and consuming locusts and the chewing locusts. My great army which I sent among you, you shall eat in plenty and be satisfied. And praise the name of the Lord your God who has dealt wondrously with you. And my people shall never be put to shame. Then you shall know that I am in the midst of Israel. <clears throat> I am the Lord your God and there is no other. My people shall never be put to shame. It shall come to pass afterwards that I will pour out my spirit on all flesh. And your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. Your old men shall dream dreams and young men shall see visions. And also on my men servants and on my maid servants. I will pour out my spirit in those days. And I will show wonders in the heavens and in the earth and blood and fire and pillars of smoke. The sun shall be turned into darkness and the moon into blood before the coming of the great and awesome day of the Lord. And it shall come to pass that whoever calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. For in Mount Zion and Jerusalem there shall be deliverance, as the Lord has said, among the remnant whom the Lord calls. Again, what do you want to do? You want to keep alive things. He said something powerful. He said prophecy. You know, there is prophetic prophecy through the word of God. Keeping it alive by prayer. That's why it says, pray for the peace of Jerusalem. While you're praying for the peace of Jerusalem, you are fulfilling prophecy. You are keeping that alive. We are watching right now prophetic things unfolding because of the years that people have been speaking peace to Jerusalem. Our U.S. Embassy is now moving to is uh, Jerusalem next week. And there is great rejoicing over there. It is phenomenal. You kidding? Now they just rejoice again today because Trump just nullified the Iranian suicide hit deal. They are dancing in the street. And these morons from the Democratic Party who are nothing but Satan worshipers and they are disconnected from life and connected to death are angry with Trump because they want war. Why do they want war? Because they want bloodshed. Why do you think they sent that gentleman over there? Shuta karabeyarra hosi. Why do you think they sent that Iranian head dude? And wants to destroy the earth. And the hits all he does is proclaim death to Israel and death to United States. America, why would you send him 180 million billion? 180 billion dollars. Unless you wanted to promote bloodshed. Come on, let's get real. Unless you wanted to promote bloodshed because you are servants of Satan. That's why he got 180 billion dollars. Something like that. No, they said 180 billion is what I heard today. Now, it could be wrong. I don't know. But whatever it is. Why would you send that in cash? <laughs> At night. <laughs> on planes. Without any approval from Congress. It was all illegal. 
Come on, let's think about this. Why would you give that much money to a, the top country that promotes and supplies weapons to every terrorist organization in the world unless you wanted bloodshed because he's a servant of Satan and every one of them that served the Democratic Party, whether they know it or not. They are disconnected from life and they're connected to death and their fruits show it. Why? Because they're the things that they approve of. Amen? The things that they approve of promotes death. That's why we got to pray them out Amen. and block their access. Amen. Amen? Okay, let's go a little further. <laughs> Second Corinthians 4. I mean, think about it. And they're all complaining, isn't it? Oh, it's going to cause war. Well, you guys are promoting war, you morons. Oh, hallelujah. That's reality. Second Corinthians 4, 7, please. Let's speak it together. We want to sow this. But we have this treasure in earthen vessels that the excellence of the power may be of God and not us. We are hard pressed in every side yet not crushed. We are perplexed but not in despair. Persecuted but not forsaken. Struck down and not destroyed. Always carrying about in the body the dying of the Lord Jesus. That the life of Jesus also may be manifested in our body. For we who live are always delivered to death for Jesus' sake, that the life of Jesus also may be manifested in our mortal body. So then death is working in us, but life in you. And since we have the same spirit of faith, according to what is written, I believed and therefore I spoke, we also believe and therefore speak, knowing that he who raised up the Lord Jesus will also raise us up with Jesus and will present us with you. In other words, what was he speaking? Life. He was watering. Amen? We are earthen vessels because we are life connected. Your body is the body of sin. It's of death. It's connected to death. So the life of Jesus, the divine nature in me and you, amen, it wants to be expressed, but it cannot be expressed if you're allowing your old man to maintain life. Be activated. Remember, life is activation. Is everybody okay? All right, verse something, 15. Uh, for all things that are for your sakes, that grace, how many of y'all know grace is God's plan? How many of y'all know you got to keep it alive? Amen. Yes. You must keep God's plan for your life alive. For all things that are for your sake, that grace having spread through the many may cause thanksgiving to abound to the glory of God. Therefore, we do not lose heart. Amen. Will you lose heart if you maintain a life connection and keep it activated? No. In fact, you will get Angry, which would be a righteous anger, and want to drive out more forces of evil. Therefore, we do not lose heart, even though our outward man is perishing. Hallelujah. Yet the inward man is being renewed day by day. It's being rewatered day by day. That's renewing. So that it can be life connected and activated all the time. For our light affliction, which is but for a moment, is working for us a far more exceeding and eternal weight of glory. While we don't look at the things which are what? Seen, but the things that are not seen. For the things which are seen are temporary, but the things which are not seen are what? Eternal. eternal. Again, you and I, we're to be keeping grace. We're expressing the fruits of life. We're to keep watering the grace, the plan of God alive in your life. Our artwork man is sin and death. It's slowly driven out by the spirit of life through cooperation and connection with the life giver. 
Colossians 3. Life connection. Colossians 3.11. Did I say that correctly? No. Colossians 3.12. Are you getting this? How do things get watered? Prayer. Prayer. Oh, hallelujah. In verse 11, let's, or verse 12, I'm sorry. Therefore is the elect of God, holy and beloved. The elect of God, holy and beloved. Are they connected or disconnected? They are connected. Life connection. Beloved, put on what? Tender mercies, kindness, humility, meekness, and long-suffering. Are those fruits of life? Yes. Bearing with one another and forgiving one another. If anyone has a complaint against another, even as Christ forgave you, you also must do it. In other words, he's talking about forgiveness. He's talking about bitterness. He's talking about envy. All of these things. Offense. All of these things that the enemy likes to water. See, the enemy plants a seed and the enemy begins to water it. That's called a corruptible seed. Because we haven't driven it out and cut loose from it and stopped feeding it. You know how many days people go on and on and on and the enemy attacks and attacks and attacks. People, somebody gets offended. And the enemy, you, may, you wake up in the morning, the enemy's still trying to water it. No matter where you go, he's trying to water it. Amen? Amen? He tries to water your pain. He tries to water your sickness. He tries to water your fears. He tries to water your past. He tries to water your failures. He tries to water it, water it, water it, water it. And then some people will just allow it to happen. Because they give up. And then you know what happens? Because they accept it, it's manifested. That's how people backslide. Somebody, offend, somebody gets offended. Then the enemy begins to water it. And then they shoot off at the mouth because they just spoke death. And then they water it. And then they grumble and complain and add in the watering. And the devil sits back. Why? They're watering their own corruptible seed. And then it manifests. Oh, hallelujah. Verse 14. But above all these things, put on love, which is the bond of perfection, and let the peace of God rule in your hearts, to which also you were called in one body, and be, and be what? Thank Thankful. Yes. Yes. And let the word of God dwell in you richly in all wisdom, teaching and admonishing one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing with grace in your hearts to the Lord. Listen, that's when you know you're backsliding. When you're no longer praising God within you. When you're no longer acknowledging him. And man, it's, if it's not in you, then you're disconnected. And you need to get connected. And whatever you do, hallelujah, praise God, thank you, Lord. Can you guide me with this? Tell me with this. Lord. Every day, my prayer is, Lord, connect me to your presence and your word and align me with your truth. You connect me. You dress me. You possess me. You come to a place where you are totally dependent on him. And let him build the house. Unless the Lord builds a house, we what? Labor in vain. And whatever you do, do in word or deed, do it all in the name of the Lord Jesus. How many know he wants to be glorified? That's what it's about. Giving thanks to God the Father through him. Yes. We are the elect of God. Why? Because we are life-connected. 
1 Corinthians 13. Oh, I already did that. No, I didn't. Okay. 1 Corinthians 13. Hallelujah. Life connection. First Corinthians thirteen. In other words, keeping things alive, they must be watered. And it's done by prayer. But if, listen, so you got to keep yourself alive <laughs> and connected, right? Amen. By getting connected in God's presence, connected to his word, aligned with the truth, getting in corporate praise and worship. So you maintain that activity in life. Why? Because if you don't maintain you, you can't maintain anything else. Amen. Your prayer life will become stinky. You'll get weak in prayer. The enemy will cause you to compromise, justify. You'll skip prayer. You may not know it, but everybody else will. Amen. Hallelujah. Sometimes you might want to ask somebody, did you pray today? Yeah, I prayed. No, you didn't. <laughs> you lied, too. <laughs> You're disconnected. <laughs> Verse 11. Did we start there yet? Okay. 1 Corinthians 3, 13, 11. When I was a child, in other words, when I was disconnected, I spoke as a child, I understood as a child, I thought as a child, but when I became connected, yes. I put away childish things. See, a child is usually flesh. They're flesh creatures. They're me, 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 me's. Amen? For now we see in a mirror dimly, but then face to face. Now I know in part, but then I shall know just as I am known. And now abide in faith. Abide. Abide. It means stay connected. Keep it watered. Keep alive faith. Keep alive hope. Keep alive love. Keep alive. Keep alive. You keep alive. But the greatest of things of these is love. Why? Because perfect love casts out all fear. How many of you know fear will drain everything? Drains everything. That's why people become anxious. Because it's fear. Amen? Amen? A child is disconnected to the life connection. We must keep faith and hope in all these things alive and activated. Amen? Keeping all things alive. How about your marriage? Your business? Your ministries? Your families? How about the things God's blessed you with? How about keeping alive favor? You need favor alive. It needs to be activated. Remember, something that's alive is activated. Amen? All of these things, you must pray. You must water. How about freedom? Let's close at Psalm 1. Psalm 1. Not someone, someone, okay? <laughs> it's a new season. This is a new day. It's a fresh anointing. Well, fresh anointing doesn't come without prayer. It doesn't come without worship. Remember, we want to keep things alive so they must be activated. Whose responsibility is it? Ours. Amen. Starting in verse 
Starting at verse 1, blessed is the man. If somebody's blessed by God, he's life connected. Amen. Blessed is the man who walks not in the counsel of the ungodly. Why? The counsel of the ungodly will connect you to death. And it will dry up and steal everything that you can get. That's why people run to the secular world for counsel. Blows me away. And they're just going to medicate him anyways. Because the world thinks a pill is the cure of everything. It's a pill that kills. Blessed is the man who does not accept any counsel from the ungodly, nor stands in the path of sinners, nor sits in the seat of the scornful. Hello! These all are connected to death. And if you associate with these individuals, you are now watering these things. But his delight is in the truth of the law of the Lord, and in this he meditates day and night. Why? Because he's, if he's meditating, he's praying on these things. He's watering the good things. And he shall be like a what? A tree planted where? Not next to a, a fire. It's going to be planted next to what? Water. Planted by the rivers of water that's going to keep things activated. Amen? And alive. You'll be a generator. That brings forth its fruits in its what? Season. Whose leaf shall not wither. And whatever he does shall what? Prosper because you are life connected. Now, the ungodly ain't going to work that way. They are like chaff, which the wind, what, drives away. Man, that's dried up, man. Therefore, the ungodly shall stand in, in the judgment. That's a, they will not stand in the judgment. They will not stand in the reward of God. So people think, well, why don't they stand in judgment? They're sinners. They will, but they will not stand in the judgment or the rewards of God. Nor sinners in the congregation of the righteous. For the Lord knows the way of the righteous, but the way of the ungodly shall what? Shall perish. Ungodly are life takers. And the godly ones are life givers. Amen? Praise God. Father, we are honored and blessed for the word that you released to us. We do understand that there's life and death in the power of the tongue. And Lord, all those things, that the enemy and corruptible seeds that have been parted, Lord, we just speak death to them in the name of Jesus. And Lord, we don't want to water and allow those things to bear fruit at all. We want the things that you've given us, the things of the Spirit that promote life and give life and bring life abundantly. Lord, we ask in the name of Jesus that what you've imparted in us tonight would be protected by the blood of the Lamb and it would grow and bear fruit for your glory and it would bring to remembrance to constantly water and keep alive and activate those things you've given us so that your name would be glorified and fruits would be produced to glorify your name in Jesus' name. And everybody said amen.